This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Netflix, GoDaddy.com, and Squarespace. Coming up today on Techzilla, Wi-Fi in your camera. It's iFi. Veronica's got a 13-inch notebook face-off. Linux for beginners and a trio of iPhone battery extenders. So grab a box of goobers and pass out those red vines because Techzilla starts now. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla, the show that helps you tame your technology beast. Yes, whether you're a beginner or someone who's been around the technology block a few times, if you've got an answer about your PC, Mac, internet, HDTV, digital cameras, wireless, all that good stuff that you want to get your hands on to, we've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we're going to track down someone who does. You, you know, we're going to talk about your 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 netbook hell in a minute. It's, I wouldn't call it hell. Your netbook heck. Per se. <laughs> We had a few exactly. emails about Powerline networking. Yeah, you guys got all worked up about that, didn't you? Um, mostly people were happy with the technology. Uh, Kishore from Seattle says, I use four Netgear XAV 101 Powerline Ethernet adapters in four different areas at home, and I'm extremely happy with the solution. I stream Netflix, podcasts, VoIP, etc. at any corner of the house and love the quality of the connection. Uh, he's also looking to stream his local over-the-air HDTV stations over that network. We're used to PVRing HDTV and moving it around the network that way. Uh, email Texel if you have a good way to move live broadcast HTTV around the house. Yeah, that should be really strange, like moving live HTTV over a network. That'll be fun. Alex from Virginia adds, I use a pair of Netgear home plug power line adapters I got for 80 bucks. The connection is bomb proof. I have successfully used it on power strips, surge protectors, and in different floors of my house. <laughs> but it constantly gives about 250 kilobits per second both ways. This is practically dial-up, mm. he says, because he's got a 10 megabit cable connection. It's more than enough for gaming, but nowhere near an Ethernet connection or even wireless. That's pig slow. That's pretty bad. <laughs> well, he, he did say he uses it with surge protectors too, which I don't think you're really supposed to do. But if it's working for him, it's working for him for now. Um, but thanks, Alex and Kishore. It's like a, like a 65 Volkswagen bug. It's slow, but it's bomb-proof. Mm -hmm. You're, is it bitter the right word, your netbook OS experience? Um, I wouldn't say bitter. So I got the <laughs> HP Mini 1000, as I that talked about, I think, last bitter. week <laughs> or last time. But it came with, I got the Mi version, the MIE mm -hmm. Mobile Internet Experience, uh, which is built off Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. So it's like their Linux OS. Mm -hmm. And I turned it on. It looks pretty. The UI is very workable. Um, but it's so locked down. You cannot do diddly squat with it. There's, first of all, there's no command line access, which is understandable because they said it, they just wanted it to be a netbook experience. They don't want it to do a lot of fancy stuff. They don't want people to get too down and dirty they don't want with the netbook. People get in trouble. Exactly. And, but on top of that, there's no like third-party app installer, so I can't even install any applications that I want to. The only way to do that is to use HP's app installer, which only lets you use HP-approved products. Now, I haven't fished around too much online to see if there's a workaround for this or if I'm just missing something. So if you guys have an HP Mini 1000 at home and you've got a way to kind of get around that without reinstalling the operating system or trying something different, let me know. Otherwise, I'm putting uh, Windows 7 on that baby. There's some cool projects coming around to build in Linux distros, but mm -hmm. most of them are actually coming from, like, this is like HP minimizing tech support calls and maximizing performance versus, like, most of the other distros are basically maximizing the hackability of the operating system. Right. There's a there's a couple Jolly of Cloud. Ubuntu netbook builds that I've seen yeah. out there floating around in the wild, and um, and then Kevin Rose was showing off that uh, Jolly Cloud. He got a copy of that? He I don't know if he has a copy of it or if he just was able to take a picture of it. Because I've seen the pictures on the web. that looks hot. If Rose, if you have a copy of Jolly Cloud, I'm hunting your ass down because I know where you live. Dude. I've been trying to um, <laughs> to convince him to, to hook me up and you know work it out that way so I can test it, but I haven't heard anything yet. So we'll Anybody's see. Hopefully in, in the near future. Huh? Has the, anybody in France has the Jolly Cloud hookup? Please email us, techzillarevision3.com. <laughs> but anyway, Scott out of Nebraska has a question about the iFi SD memory cards. He writes, would you do a review of the iFi memory cards? These SD and SDHC media devices have a built-in Wi-Fi transmitter that uploads the files on the card to a specified computer or web server. The concept is great, but I'm interested in hearing how well it works in practice. Thanks, Scott in Omaha, Nebraska. Well, that's a great question, right? You're talking about a nine, uh, SD cards, nine bucks at our local right. computer store. Why would you pay 100 or 100 
$130 for one because it has Wi-Fi built into the SD card and it really does automatically, automagically upload to your photos. I like that. Check it out, right? We've basically, you, uh, you, you, log, you create a login with your email name. You set it up so it'll log into your Wi-Fi network at home and as long as the uh, iFi manager is running on your system when you turn your camera on inside of your house or inside of your office oh, it'll automatically right start there yeah and it's fast actually it'll actually download pictures almost as fast uh, as we can take them well not that fast but fast enough right <laughs> The pictures just download. Um, iFi cards, they really do contain Wi-Fi gear. The $100 share model is the step up from the $80 home model. It adds the ability to directly upload to online sites like Flickr and about a zillion others. And then there's the $130 Explore model, which there was fat activity in the forums over this week. Yes, a lot of people in the forums and over Twitter and on email were asking why we didn't include the iFi Explore in our section on geotagging last week. And well, true, it's not a actual GPS unit for one. Right, we were which arguing. We'll get into. We were <laughs> arguing because we weren't entirely positive how it worked. And you know, one position was you don't need to be on a Wi-Fi that doesn't make sense or a certified right. Wi-Fi anyway. And the other one was, no, it only works if you're on a Wi-Fi, secure Wi-Fi connection, yada, yada. So now we took the time and actually, you know, learned a bit more about it. What, what, I, I feel tested, right? Field tested. As long as you're within range of Wi-Fi, they've, at least here in the Bay Area, they've Skyhook Wireless, right? That's the name of the company. You've, mm -hmm. If you've heard of them, it's probably in terms of the first generation iPhones where they right. triangulated the cell towers to locate your location on Google Maps, right? It's great. Um, the Wi-Fi positioning system, or WPS, does the same thing only only using Wi-Fi hotspots or basically Wi-Fi. So they've tracked down a ton of stuff. Um, it works in areas where I know there are no commercial Wi-Fi operators. So basically if there is any kind of Wi-Fi right. in the area that it can kind of ping against. It seemed to. Here's the thing, right? In the city, works great. Up in Petaluma, a much smaller city, still worked pretty good. Even at the outskirts, um, as soon as I got Basically, when you get a Wi-Fi range on this, you have no geotagging mm -hmm. whatsoever because okay. without Wi-Fi of some type, it's not going to be able to guesstimate your location. Um, so basically, like everything I took up, you know, I pulled over on 101 to take pictures. Or imagine if you're in a national park or if you're traveling in the middle of Nevada, you're not going to have geotagging These information. These days, who knows how many places have Wi-Fi? Well, you know, what's, what's interesting, scared. right? First year is included for Wayport hotspots, which basically like think McDonald's. Okay. So it's not going to know where you were when you were wandering in the high desert, but when you get to Elko, you can pretty much sit in the McDonald's and upload all your pictures, <laughs> which is pretty silly, at least until you run out of battery power. Um, does it that, drain a lot of the battery? It doesn't seem to impact when you're taking photos. It doesn't seem to have any impact. They've done a lot of work with power management on that. However, you have to leave the camera on the entire time it's uploading pictures. Well, that makes sense. Right? So, yeah. But, you know, the, the thing I think transmit. of is, you know, maybe you want to, like, turn it, you know, turn off power saving, turn it on when you get to the house, and plug it in to keep the battery charged. Otherwise, it'll just sit there and run until it runs out of battery. It's a nice feature to have though. It's pretty slick actually. I've I keep thinking of like, you know, <laughs> you know the, the pictures on this camera which belongs to a family member who is not me. Um, it goes back to the very first pictures taken on this because it's such a huge uh, SD card that we have in this one. So there's literally hundreds of pictures on that. And I just like the idea of automatically uploading. Does it work? Absolutely. One thing though, watch out if you're buying used cards because the cards are tied into the owner's email address, and if the owner doesn't release the oh, card, no. You're it is uploading useless. uploading pictures onto their account, probably, too. Yeah, if it works at all, because you have to. What's weird, okay, weird's maybe a strong word because it's all built around Wi Fi, but if you don't have an internet connection, I don't think it's going to work because you have to log in with the mothership at iFi to download your pictures. Very interesting. Well, I should double check that. That's good to know for <laughs> sure. We'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> But it's, it's kind of because it has local software and it requires an internet connection. You have to be logged in so mm -hmm. you can download pictures. Well, still to come, watch out before you buy memory for a Core i7 machine and also Pat's got some iPhone battery packs. But first, a word from one of the sponsors that makes this show possible, GoDaddy.com. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and the online businesses that aren't what they claim to be, and worry that their personal and financial information might fall into the wrong hands. Turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage with the ironclad protection of a GoDaddy.com secure certificate. Plus, enter code TECH5, that's T-E-K-5, when you check out, and save an additional $10 off any order of $40 or more. 
Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. Support us by supporting our sponsors. Welcome to this week's Freebie Download Pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week's pick, the Cam Player. Now when it comes to free Windows media players, your choices are unfortunately endless, and most of them suck. But if you want a player that can handle every media format known to Windows, you usually either go with VLC or Go. Well now there's a third, the KM player. From the traditional WMV, MPEGs, and MP3s to more esoteric MKVs, Google Video, GBI files, Flash Video, FLV files, AUG and FLAC, this player plays them all and it does a lot more. You also get video processing options like deinterlacing that will help smooth out low resolution video content as well as support for subtitles based on SAMI, Subgroup Text, Micro DVD, Smile, Real Text, SSA, ASS, USF, Bob Sub, Closed Caption, Unicode, and more than we really care to list here. Besides the standard playback functions that include AV repeats and bookmarks for all video playback, additional functionality can be added through plugins, including Winamp plugins. If you've been looking for a media player that will handle all your playback needs in one convenient package, we suggest you look no further than KM Player. Intel's Core i7 processors aren't cheap, but they are smoking fast, and a bunch of you have questions about building a machine around the Halem CPUs. Bob writes in, I'm planning on building a new computer at the end of the year, and I'm looking at using a Core i7 CPU if I were to build today, probably the 920, but I don't know what speed RAM I would use. The last time I built a computer, the motherboard determined what RAM could be used, but with the memory controller now in the CPU, the processor should determine that. I can't find any specs for what speed RAM can be used with a particular CPU. Do I have this all wrong, or is there some place where I can find that information? Okay, Bob. He's really thinking ahead. He is. He's I'm excited. Like, we didn't just get this email in. It was sent at the end of. No, this came like in the last like, week. Okay, weird. Yeah. Okay. This well, wasn't yeah, like a November email. email. Cool. That's good. And you know, a lot of the reviews are really bizarre, and so many of the reviews are people who are like, "I am hyper, super hardcore overclocker dude," and I'm going to use like, well, you know what? We'll talk about bogus <laughs> memory speed issues in a second. That was the best voice I've ever heard you do. <laughs> I'll try to use it all the time. <laughs> no, that's not necessary. Oh, Continue. Sorry. Anyhow, the Core i7 is a brave new world with no front side bus tying up everything and slowing everything down. The biggest change between this and your last system build is triple channel. The Core i7 is optimized to use three memory modules in a bank of three and will only operate at its fastest with three sticks of memory. Not two, not four, three. 3 or 6 or 12, 3, 3, 3. Now, depending on, you know, as long as Intel doesn't release any updates between now and when you build, you're most likely looking for DDR3-1066, though everything I've read says the Core i7, 920, and 940 are stable running with DDR3-1333. And it's not quite overclocking because of the way the processor is separated from the memory bus. It's really cool, actually. Folks building a Core i7-965 can think about running DDR3-1600 or 1860. 66 RAM. Veronica's falling asleep. No, which I'm is, not. No, 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 no. Actually, no, you were yawning. You just and yawned. It, exactly. And you I know yawned why? because I was off camera, so I was taking that moment to yawn. I thought you were yawning because the numbers were boring. Because you know well, what? Now you blew my cover. Thanks you, a lot. No, 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 no. Because the thing is, for a basic work machine, a three gigabyte basic 1066 777-20 DDR3 module, more than enough, right? Now we're talking about memory now timing. Now I'm excited and awake. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, though. The benchmarks I've seen, faster memory timings don't seem to add, or faster memory don't seem to add a lot of detectable performance except on synthetic memory bandwidth benchmarks. Yay! But maybe I just haven't seen the right real-world benchmarks where 12 gigabytes of DDR3-1600 or 1866 really shines. But memory companies want you to buy the more expensive memory. Why? Because they make more money. That said, if you're doing serious gaming, video editing, stuff like that, a lot of folks are talking 64-bit Vista or Windows 7 machines with at least 6 gigabytes of RAM on a Core i7, and I've been told 64-bit Vista is <clears throat> stupid delete expletive fast with more than 4 mm. gigabytes of memory on pre-Core i7 systems, but I haven't had the pleasure of experiencing it firsthand. People are saying it runs ridiculously fast if you have the 64-bit version and 4 gigabytes of more memory. It probably won't be an issue by the time you build your machine, Bob, but folks building Core i7 machines now should buy a kit designed for Core i7. There have been some compatibility issues with older DDR3 memory, i.e. it won't work with the cool guy motherboards that the i7 machines use. And of course, this could all change by the time you build your system if Intel gets aggro with releases between now and the end of the year, so keep researching. I was just all excited about the memory. I know. And then it's like, the core timings, I was sitting here, it's like, 
Oh my god. There's like 1066, 1333, it's 1600, 1866. And other than like, like you know, it's Sysoft, synthetic memory benchmarks, and none of the real world benchmarks, because everything seems to be running so fast, it's CPU bound. Unless... Well, I'm exhausted. You just plum pooped me out. I think it's time for a video question. We've got one from Robert. Patrick and Veronica, I love your show. It fulfills all my nerdy needs, although not always done dirt cheap. Here's the deal. I want to love Linux. I've tried a couple times and I've been thwarted. Where do I go? First of all, you might want to get that hand thing taken care of. They seem to be multiplying. That's no, weird. these. These. Anyhow, there are a few ways to ease yourself into the world of Linux. If you're a Windows user, WinLinux is a distro with an installer that runs within Windows. Click on the icon like any other application, and it'll reboot the computer into WinLinux. Uh, from there, you can run any Linux apps that you want. Just exit out to get back into Windows. Easy peasy, right? Very easy. It's Very a nice simple. way to test it, especially if you haven't done much with Linux before and you're scared of wiping your whole just computer. Just another application. It's just enough. <laughs> just enough. You could also burn a live CD of Ubuntu, which will allow you to boot into the the OS from the disk instead of installing it onto the computer itself. And as of Ubuntu 6.06, I think that's, is that Dapper Drake? It sounds about right. Feisty one Fawn. Those, one of those. Galloping Gorm, I don't know, you know. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, if you like what you can see, you Irritated can then install Ibex. the OS from the disk onto the computer. So you don't even need to do a separate disk, because usually you can, cool. you can call them or email them and request a disk, and they'll send you one, or you can download it. But it's a pretty big, you know, it's a pretty big file. Yeah. Um, but this way, you can actually take that live CD that you've burned and, then, and install it from there. Nice that's clean pretty install. cool, actually. So that's handy. Um, those are just a couple of ways to get you started, but I'm sure our viewers out there, our brilliant, brilliant nerd viewers, how I love you so, have way more answers for you. Um, you guys can send in your suggestions to Texilla at revision3.com with the subject, Easy Linux, to help Robert out some more. Yeah. I thought they're, they're always our best resource, so I thought they could help Robert out a little bit. Well, it's also fun, like, the installation of Linux has gotten really easy, and there's tons of applications if you can find them. Yeah. You know, my, it's, it's, it's been about a year since I've, I've done anything with a Linux box. Like, the last time I was still sitting there like, you know what the hardest thing to do is? To change my monitor resolution. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the little things. <laughs> Isn't it always? Now, if you want to get your 15 seconds of internet video fame, send us a video. All you need to do is record yourself in front of a camera asking a question no longer than 15 seconds. Then upload them to YouTube on the interwebs and email us the link with the video question in the subject line. No attachments. But first, it's time now for our Netflix-sponsored movie pick of the week. This week, Paprika. This anime feature, based on a 1993 novel of the same name, Paprika centers around a research psychologist who uses a device that permits therapists to help patients by entering into their dreams. When the device, the DC Mini, that allows the process of dream insertion is stolen and mysterious events start taking place, they must uncover the culprit before the reality and dream world merge. Don't forget to check out the other 90,000 titles available at Netflix, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. And because they now have over 40 shipping centers, almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. The Netflix plans start from $4.99, but as a new member, you can get a no-risk two-week free trial membership. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash Texilla. And don't forget those dub dub dubs. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Ajax API's Playground from Google. If you've been curious about developing simple Ajax apps for the web, Google's built an API playground for you to get your hands dirty in. Here's how it works. First, make sure you're signed into your Google account so you can save and load files. On the left-hand side is a list of APIs from Google, including search, language, maps, Earth APIs, etc. When you select an API you want to work on, it brings it up in the edit window on the right. From there, you can make changes to customize the code and tailor the API for you. You'll be able to see the changes in the run window on the bottom after you save it. Not only is this great practice for working with Ajax, but you can even take this code and use it on your own site. So if you're looking for some easy, breezy Ajax code to play with, check out Ajax API's Playground from Google. If you're a web developer, designer, entrepreneur, or somebody with an interest in the power of the web, you need to check out the Future of Web Apps Miami. Featuring speakers like Gary Vaynerchuk, Jason Fried, Joel Spolsky, and Mike Harrington, you'll be exposed to new ideas, concepts, and the potential to network some of the giants in web development. Future of Web Apps Miami will take place at the Adrian Arch Center on February 23rd and 24th. You can find out more at the website listed below. 
Let's take a question from Patrick. Actually, it's kind of a mini roundup of iPhone battery packs. A lot of folks like me, and I believe uh, Ms. Veronica, have you had issues with the battery life of the iPhone 3G? I would say I do, Mr. Patrick Norton. Did you, in fact, borrow one of these for several days? I did, in fact, do that. Yes. The, it's not, you know, the, the I believe it was this one right here. It, it was, actually. Actually, a well, lot look, of people know. Look, it even has a little nubbin on the back that shows you how much battery life, just like the, uh, the MacBooks, the MacBook Pros. Okay, so a lot of vendors have sleeve-style booster batteries for the iPhone, the iPhone 3G. One of the nice things about a cell phone selling in this kind of volume is the chance for lots of accessories to get built because there's a Yay. big market for them. The so the Hybrid 1000 technically, though, isn't an iSpod, an iSpod or an I, iPhone-specific uh, battery, but I get asked about it all the time. There's solar cells, it's got a little built-in battery, and it uses basically iGo tips to allow you to connect to different devices. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. The best part of this is you can actually charge it off of a USB port since I live here in San Francisco, the land under fog that the sun There's forgot. There's no sun here. Yeah. There's no sun. You can charge this in about a week in my neighborhood in San Francisco. Generally speaking, it needs about 12 hours to charge up. If you live where there's sun, 10 to 12 hours will do it, but the thing is, it's like, you it's got a carabiner. You can put it on your backpack. It'll charge while you hike. Myth, actually. If you put it on a table where the sun hits it or on a rock where the sun hits it and you try to keep it aligned pointing directly to the sun, it's going to work pretty good, especially if you're in like Phoenix or some other place where there's lots and lots of thun, sun. Um, it's not going to work with 3G iPhones unless you get, well, 3G iPhones, hold Why? on, hold on, hold on. 3G iPhones require power to not just the power pins on the USB, but the data pins also. That's why none oh. of your older accessories work with 3G iPhones, not that I'm bitter. Unless you get the new 3G compatible tip from Solio or iGo. It's the A133 if you're getting one from Solio or if you have a, uh, excuse me, uh, from iGo. If you have like iGo chargers and you want to use it with your iPhone 3G, mm -hmm. that new tip will actually work with that one. So. Moving on to the cool stuff. The Mophie Juice Pack. This one was pretty good. It's very sleek. It's a tight fit, especially if you have any kind of a wrapper around your iPhone. Well, I have to iPhone. say, I, I have a jello skin on my iPhone, and it made it impossible <laughs> to get the damn thing off. Like, it's, I couldn't get the iPhone out of there after that point. And I mean, jello skins are so unbelievably thin. Yes. I couldn't believe that it was making causing that much friction. It's very snug. It's very specifically designed for the iPhone 3G. 1800 milliamp battery is a little bit bigger than the battery on the iPhone. It should, it's not going to double you. It's going to try to double your talk time on your iPhone 3G. It's going to come close. Um, and it basically, the biggest thing about this one is it's sleek, it's simple, and it's sleek. You know, that would be great to have on a long flight if you were yes. watching uh, TV shows or movies on your iPhone. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But if you're I've on an even longer that flight, problem. Oh. this is not sleek. It is the Fast Mac 4 or IV. The iPhone battery pack sells for 80 bucks. The uh, Mophie, by the way, sells for 100 uh, what's really cool about this 3100 milliamp hour battery, they're claiming 4x talk time. I'll call it two plus recharges, especially if you do their hack. Fast Max says wait for your phone to get down to 20%, then plug this in, refill it most of the way, not the last 10%, because the last 10% takes a long time the way batteries charge. Batteries charge in very interesting ways. I did not know that. It's an interesting thought. It also actually has a light oh, built in. Geez. <laughs> Terribly sorry. I just blinded both of us. Woo! Um, it's got a light built in for photos. Let me turn that off before I hurt us. A USB output if you have USB devices. And you can actually change, and I'm going to be very gentle, uh, you can actually change the face plates should oh, they do another, broken. in theory, right? The idea is that you can buy a new face plate if they release another phone. Ah, so okay. that you can continue to use this. So if the size changes, you don't have to buy a whole new unit. Exactly. And what's really out of control and kind of fascinating about this is they went to make it in China. They thought the quality sucked, and they're made here in beautiful California. Oh, they're beautiful. They're made in the United States. Mostly sunny California, except for right here. Well, out by Fresno, where these are made, it's a lot sunnier than it is here. <laughs> um, I actually really like this one. It is not sleek. It is definitely big and bulky, but it's got a big fat battery. It's got the little light, if you're into the little yeah, light action on the it. pictures. That's one of the biggest problems with the little light. It does work fabulous as a flashlight in a dark room. Um, and yeah, actually, this is this is my favorite right now. So that's your favorite? That's my favorite. Because the last time we talked, you liked this one the best. Was well, that before you tried that one? That was before I tried that. This is the, the best one that I've seen so far. And then, you know, this this is just a big honking adapter. That's kind of like the biggest issue. A lot of people aren't going to want to slide Aww. this in their pocket. But you know what you do is you like, you plug it in, you get happy, you charge, you pull it back out, you put this back in your bag until you need the flashlight. Sounds like a good idea. Do you want to be part of our continuing plans to make Texilla a better and more compelling show? Then please join us in our go-to meeting, meeting, 
where you can share your thoughts about what you want to see right here on Texilla. All you need to do is sign up for a free go to meeting trial using the try it free button along with the code Texilla. Remember, sign up using the code Texilla and come Friday, February 6th, you'll have a chance to chat with Pat, me, Roger, or Serafina and let your voice be heard. So sign up now. It's time to thank one of our sponsors and here to tell us more is Revision 3's beloved intern, Tyler Howard. Hey Texilla fans, I'm Tyler Howarth, an intern here at Revision 3, and I'm here to talk about Squarespace. I'm sure you've all heard about Squarespace's excellent WYSIWYG editor, their fancy templates, their excellent customer service, the list goes on and on. But did you know that plenty of large-scale sites use Squarespace as well? Kevin Rose, Sarah Lane, Alex Aldrich, Mark Echo even uses Squarespace to host and serve his content. That's because Squarespace is built to scale. Kevin Rose's blog has hit the front page of Dig multiple times and Squarespace hosting holds up in the most frightening amount of traffic. Every Squarespace site, even the lowest level, is built to scale and will never go down because of surges in traffic. It helps me sleep at night knowing that my personal site will always be up and live on the interwebs just how it should be. Because Squarespace is cool and down with the Zilla, they're giving fans 10% off of the life of their membership. Just use the promo code TEKZ when you sign up for your account. So remember, for all your website needs, check out Squarespace. Up next, Richard wants to know how to keep from being pulled back into the cult of Apple. They keep pulling me. I am not going to do that, sorry. <laughs> After 10 years of using Apple laptops, I'm starting to consider PCs again as it become time for an upgrade. The problem is, how can anyone possibly pick a single PC laptop? If I go Apple, I've got but a small selection to go through, but in the PC world, there's thousands of options and none of them stand out. <laughs> There's a sign of an Apple user. I just want something with a 15 inch or so widescreen. I'm not interested in playing games on it, but I watch a lot of online video. I don't want super light or super heavy or super thin or super thick. I don't want to pay extra for Sony style as I'm actually looking to save some money. I just want something that doesn't make me want to go running straight back to my MacBook Pro. Richard. Yeah, that's not a tall order. Actually, it's an easy order. It's a pretty easy order. I actually found you some decent 13-inch laptops, 13 or 13.3-inch laptops. You can probably find some 15-inchers uh, out there as well. Um, two PC laptops that I've looked at that probably fit your needs are uh, the Dell XPS M1330. That one was a big deal last year or the year before. <laughs> Did it come out last year? Yeah, I guess it was last year. Um, it's a good one, and if you don't splurge for the discrete graphics chip, it should cost you under $1,000. It's got a uh, 2 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor, 320 gigabyte hard drive, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 13.3 inch screen. Now, I know you said you don't want the thinnest, whatever, but this one is one of the thinner PC notebooks out there. So added benefit, I guess, without having to jack up the price too much. Um, another good option is the HP Pavilion DV3510NR, another 13-incher. It won CNET's Editor Choice Award, which means they've definitely run it through the gauntlet, which is nice to know. It's got the same specs as the Dell XPS, actually, and it costs $9.99. Well, these are just two, but as you said, there are tons out there in the PC laptop verse. Uh, check yeah. online for the Asus X83VMX1, the Gateway P7811FX, and the Toshiba Satellite E105 S1402. Gotta love those names, huh? They're so fun to say. All are similarly yeah. specced and under $1,000. You know what? You can actually go under $700. Oh, previously. yeah. No, those uh, three of those that I mentioned, I think, are under $800. Yeah, it's so. it's it's a it's weird because I understand you being completely overwhelmed with the options. I basically I buy Dell Dell notebooks, mm -hmm. fifteen twenty five is another one out there. The the sort of cheesy processor versions under five hundred bucks. It's got a fifteen inch screen. It's widescreen, so it's great for movies. Uh, and I guess it's probably under six hundred five you know ninety nine with a core two processor. I just realized we didn't really answer his question because we just gave him like ten more suggestions that he still has to weed through. So, <laughs> well, now you've got, at least it's whittled down from hundreds into a nice handy pile of 10 or so. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's <laughs> it's what's it's one of the pains of choice. The flip side mm -hmm. is if you if you do an apples to apples comparison, you're getting you're not getting the apple style, you're not getting the cool guy machines aluminum case, but you're getting a lot of computing power for considerably less cash. Right. Well, or you could just get an HP Mini 1000 and then bunk the OS off. <laughs> or get the XP, XP version. version I found the XP version or of it charming. Or make it a Hackintosh. Charming. That's another thing I've thought of. <laughs> For all of you watching, as you can tell, we live on your questions. So email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how-tos, you ask us. We will do our best to deliver. 
but we can't deliver if we don't get your emails. So don't be shy. Send them in now to Texilla at revision3.com. Or even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have in the admiration of your friends and family when they see your happy shiny mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds or less, upload to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. We're always in there hanging out. Well, you're not, but I am. They're Next week, <laughs> we'll be looking at a preview of Windows 7 Beta, and you've got until February 12th to download the beta, so get on that. You've actually got until February 10th. You need to start downloading by February 10th. You have until February 12th to finish. So if you want to join along oh, with us really? on Windows, our little <laughs> Windows 7 tour, Download it now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next week, you've been watching. Takes a lot. The monster. A special thank you to Andrew who sent me these beautiful bags of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Uh, I do not encourage you guys to send us stuff here at Texilla, but this made me very happy and um, it was a very thoughtful gift. So thank you. You can't have them. The rest of us will actively encourage you to help keep Veronica happy here at Texilla. Donuts go well with coffee, especially blueberry cake and chocolate donuts. Stop it. Stop abusing <laughs> our, our viewership. <laughs> Richard wants to know how to keep from being... <laughs> Don't stop us! This is the good stuff, you Roger. You ruin all the spontaneity! <laughs> Just shut up, everyone. And we'll f***ing you! Will... <laughs> <laughs> There's some sort of mutiny in the control room. Oh, he's coming out here. You're really coming out here. Do you insulted my intelligence? Roger Whippin is his keen intellect and sharp wit. <laughs> His stabbing comments, they stab right in the Ready? ear. Does that hurt? No. 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 Uh oh. That hurt. Come on, that hurt. Okay, it hurt. Pew, pew, pew. Pew. Welcome to another episode of Websites We Just Can't Get Enough. Three. Quiet, you! I smite you down. Right. I'm and crush your, your head. head.